Let's explore the similar solids theorem now. I'm going to start with these two segments in the ratio of 2 to 5 respectively. That's the red to the blue. And I'm first going to generate squares like we did in chapter 11. And you can see now the ratio of the areas. I could count up the squares, but it's clearly this is a 2 by 2, 5 by 5. The ratio is 4 to 25. When I project into three dimensions, as you'd expect, I now have a ratio that looks like this. And that's going to be 8 to 125. Of course, this works um, for all similar solids. It's just easiest if we see it with the cubes. So we'll get some examples and we'll get right to it. All right, the first step is to identify similar solids. And I've got two potential candidates, exercise number four, these two pyramids, exercise number five, these two prisms. Let's first set up the extended ratios. And again, this would have to be true. Um, and obviously we have to, these are easy because they're oriented the same direction, but clearly we have to compare altitudes to altitudes, short uh, side of the base to short side of the base, etc. Um, this would have to be true. We don't know that yet. On the right, for number six, this would have to be true. Now to evaluate, when we have a ratio and we just have two fractions, let's say, um, cross multiplying is great, but here we're not, cross multiplying is not so good. We're going to pull out a calculator, just do this, convert them, five divided by nine with a simple calculator, and just turn them into decimals. We've got this one here. We've got 7 divided by 12 and 6 tenths. Hey, so far so good. Now let's try one more. We've got 11 divided by 14.8. Oh, rot row, that does not work. So right away, we see something is up. And therefore, those two the two pyramids are not similar. Now, let's see if we did the same thing with the prisms on the right, and I'll spare you the calculator work here. And what do you know? They all come up with three quatas, as we'd say on the East Coast. Well, six over eight, some of those you could do in your head. That's three fourths, um, 4.5 over six, and I recognize that. This one, uh, and again, you use that with your calculator. You've got these ratios, you get the same decimal three times. That means the figures are similar. Well, let's just do one more uh, for identifying the solids. This is number six in your text. And we've got a pair of cones here. And uh, we're just going to compare the two radii to the two heights. Be careful because you're given a diameter on the second one. So 8 is to 24 as, sorry, 8 is to 12 uh, because you want the radius as 18 is to 27. Now, um, is that true? Well, we've done this so many ways, but just to review, we could factor because clearly we could factor out the fours on the left fraction and we could factor out the nines, both of these fractions. In other words, simplify to two thirds. And that would be one method. And the other method, if you take these two and, and you, oh, you've done this a million times, just take the two and cross multiply them. So eight times 27 and set and see how that compares to 12 times 18 and it's a match. So yes, these two are similar solids. Now let's make use of our theorems have for similar solids. We've got two shapes here which look like cylinders. A and B, they're, and they're similar. The A is smaller than B. The scale factor is 1 to 2 from A to B. Now, I don't really know the radius, the height, or even the relative shape, if they are cylinders, that is, that, because they could be short, squat cylinders. They could be tall, skinny ones. The fact is, it doesn't matter. We already have decided, or we've been told, they're similar, and we've got the surface area and volume for A. And we're going to use this fact, the scale factor of 1 to 2. Now that does mean all linear measurements are 1 to 2. This radius is half of this one, or I should say this radius is double the short one. This height needs to be doubled to make this height. But areas, as you recall, a little bit different. The surface area, the ratio of the areas, that is, 
is the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides. And of course, that would mean that the 150 pi square inches for A is to the surface area of B as one is to four. Or you could just say, multiply it times four. And four times 150 is 600, so surface area B, 600 pi square inches. And you see where this is going when we go to volumes, because the volume of A is to the volume of B as one cubed is to two cubed, or 250 pi cubic inches is to the volume of B as one is to eight. Um, so now, well, you could cross multiply, but really, um, all you got to do is take 250 pi times 8. Four 250s are 1,000. You already know that in your head. Double that, you got 2,000. So look at that. No calculator was needed in this exercise. 2,000 pi cubic inches for the volume of B. Now let's do another exercise with a scale factor, number 10. We have a given scale factor of 5 to 2. So that's from A to B. So A to B, I know that the second cone is going to be smaller. And if the scale factor is 5 to 2, recall that means any linear measurements, such as radii, are in the ratio of 5 to 2. Altitudes, this altitude to this altitude, would be in the ratio of 5 to 2. Slant heights, any of those measurements that are linear are in a ratio of 5 to 2. Um, and again, like the last one, we don't know if these are tall, tall cones or if they're short squat cones, we don't really know. All we know is that we have given surface area and volume for the one on the left, for the A cone. So let's, um, now let's just work through this one. It will take a calculator. The surface area of A is to the surface area of B as five squared is to two squared. And I can substitute those values. This time I'm going to need that calculator. And notice I've got it in the four banger mode, the uh, abbreviated calculator, because that's all we need. And let's put in uh, 2356.2, and it's just straight cross multiplication. So let's take times four, and then divide by 25. Now your textbook is rounding off uh, to five sig figs, but I'm going to round to the tenths place because I don't think you can measure that closely on this figure. So let's go with that. So either, either way, you ask your teacher where they want to round. So that's going to be the surface area. So this, you can see this first surface area um, started nearly 2,400 square centimeters. We're down under 400, a lot smaller. Let's look at volume. Volume of A is to volume of B as 5 cubed is to 2 cubed. And you know these numbers. You, you should know them in your head. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 again is 125. So the volume of the larger cone is to the volume of the wee cone as 125 is to 8. And again, we'll do this one with the calculator. Straightforward. I know you know how to cross multiply, but let's just let's just do this so for a good refresher here. Um, 0.9 and times 8, and then we're going to divide by 125. You can see this is going to get be a big reduction. And you can see again, I'll go to the nearest tenth, 476.9. And if we look at the original volume, um, I mean, that's a substantial reduction uh, from nearly 7,500 uh, square centimeters, cubic centimeters, down to under 500. Well, now that we know how to use a scale factor, let's see if we can find one. And just remember what a scale factor means, that would be the, the ratio of any linear measurements. For example, this radius to this radius, that would be the scale factor, the linear relationship. So let's start out with the first one. We're given these volumes, big volumes. Um, and I'm going to say 8 pi to 125 pi cubic feet. And I can divide out those pies right away. And just as I could divide out those cubic feet if I had there. After all, a ratio is dimensionless. Uh-huh. 
So now I've got to take the cube root of those two numbers. Now, most of us probably know the cube roots, um, but if you don't and you just want exercise with it, we've got to be able to find it on your calculator. Number one, on your, on your cheap version calculator, it's not there. You need to upgrade. There you go. And we'll put in eight. And again, in our school calculator, we have to take the inverse of the cube button. Most of you will have a cube button, otherwise you've got an x to the y button. And so you can see there that the cube root of eight is two. Two times two times two is eight. Um, now let's clear that out and put in 100, let's see, 125. And again, the cube root, oh boy, I don't like that. The cube root is five. Um, and you can see there the algorithm of this calculator introduces a rounding error. So um, uh, we know that this is going to be 2 to 5. So then that would be the scale factor, 2 to 5. Again, meaning this radius to this radius would be in the ratio of 2 to 5. Now, on 14, we were not given volumes. No, no, no. We were given surface areas. And in a surface area, First thing we've got to do is this. I'm going to say, all right, 288 cubic centimeters to 128 cubic centimeters. I'll divide out the cubic centimeters. I'm going to simplify this to 9 fourths. Oh, I'm coming back to this for those of you that say, huh, how do I do that? But you should know how to do that. And um, But let's just move on with that here. Obviously, we take the square roots now because these this was the ratio of surface areas, not volumes. So this one has a scale factor of 3 to 2. Now more on the simplifying. You know, if you look at this, these numbers, 288 and 128, you know you, you can do a lot of simplifying on this. But um, you may not recognize, if you're in a computer science class, you recognize 128 as a power of 2. So it's got a bunch of 2s as factors. But here's an easy way. Okay, I'll, I do this a lot when, I, when I'm press for time, I'll just keep dividing by 2. Uh, that's dividing by 2. Well, they're still both even, right? So let's do it again. Divide by 2. Oh, still divisible by 2. Oh, still divisible by 2. And I say, what do you know? Still divisible by 2. And now I have to stop. No more 2s as factors. As a matter of fact, um, these two numbers are what we would call relatively prime. Uh, relatively prime, they have no common factors other than 1. So that's my, that's my 9 to 4, and then I'm going to work with that number. Just a quick review on how we simplify. All right, let's move okay, on. Okay, we're given the volumes of two spheres and we're going to find the ratio of surface areas. We're going to start of course with the ratio of volumes because we can calculate that directly. We've got 2 pi cubic feet and 16 pi cubic feet. So if I want a ratio I can see it's 1 to 8. But just a reminder if I set these two units here I divide these out. Remember ratios are dimensionless both containing a factor of pi and I see a pair of even numbers here, so I divide out the 2 and the 16, and I can clearly simplify that to 1 oops, and 8. So the ratio of the volumes is 1 to 8. And we know that we take the cube roots. We've shown how to do that before. And that would make the scale factor, or the ratio of corresponding sides, such as radii, um, and now I'm going to take that and I'm going to have to square it. And that would give me the ratio of the areas. So the ratio of the volumes was 1 to 8. The ratio of the areas, in this case, 1 to 4. All right, so now we'll use the given scale factor here, 2 to 3, blue to red. And we know the surface area of this blue cylinder. Again, we don't really know much about their relative shapes, but we do know the scale factor, and we know this uh, surface area here. Very easily we'll calculate this red surface area. So we are using our theorem, which says that the ratio of the area is the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides, and which is the scale factor. 
And now let's just set this up. So 78 pi square meters is to the unknown square meters as 4 is to 9. So this is a time when you're going to break out your old calculator. Let's, uh, uh, so clearly 78, we'll leave it in terms of pi, so we'll just take 78 times 9. 78 times 9, and then let's divide that by 4. And there you go, 175 and a half pi, and that would be square meters. And we're finished.